Hi everyone, thank you all for stopping in today to watch today's video. I really appreciate you taking some time to watch it. Uh, in today's video, I wanted to sit down and talk to everyone about, you know, what is the story behind the Perkins Custom Swim Bait Company? Uh, how did it start? Where did it come from? You know, kind of just the beginning of everything, how it all started. So, it was back in... It was really back in 2019 is when this whole thing kind of got kicked off and my dad and I were watching the uh, the tactical bass and I think it was their one of their how to catch the biggest bass in the lake seminar kind of thing so the idea was okay well we've got you know trout stocks in our local lakes here so can we do what they're doing out in California and this was prior to you know tactical bass and moving to Tennessee but so we got watching that video and then we stumbled upon butch brown and uh him catching you know the 65 pound limit of largemouth with the the huddleston deluxe and then you come roll into the depths 250 and then we stumbled upon tackle warehouse with the uh the roman made mother okay so a 500 hundred dollar glide bait and it's made out of wood so um, for many of you all that don't know, my dad was a very, very talented carpenter, uh, woodworker, you know. Uh, so I asked him, Dad, could you build us a glide bait? Could you make us something similar to this? Um, and this was just for he and I, our purposes to use because, um, you know, wanting to try something that large and just give it a shot. Okay, surely this can't be that hard to make. Um, so we did or rather he did, I shouldn't say me, I, I really had very little involved at that point. Um, so dad ended up making us a couple of prototypes over the course of the next, let's say three to four months. Okay, well during this time in January of 2020, um, Mr. Nathan Light and 3B Outdoors had a seminar um, at a local church here in uh, Kingsport and they had a guest there by the name of Craig Powers, um, and CP did a seminar, and at the end of his seminar, he specifically talked about fishing big swim baits. And it was a very enlightening, very, very enlightening seminar that he gave. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and it really spawned a lot of these ideas to big bait fishing. Okay, well, how do we do this? How do we do that? And then it, it went from there. Okay, so... <laughs> Within the next couple of weeks after January, I think it was, it was either January or February, Dad had completed a couple of the prototypes that we'd made, that he'd made, and I was fortunate enough to be fishing one. He was too. Um, it was about a 10 inch bait, solid wood, a heavy, heavy bait. Um, wood really increases the weight of the, the baits. But we were over on Watauga Lake miserable miserable day rainy 40 degrees was the high it was rough wind was blowing too so it makes it even worse uh, lucky it didn't start snowing on us but dad ended up throwing his bait out behind the boat let it sink down to about probably 15 20 feet a 10 pound lake trout came up and ate the bait and I'll put that picture up here to let you see this beautiful fish. Um, and then we were hooked. That was the beginning of our swim bait adventure, this fish. And I will never forget this. Um, I wish with everything in me that I had video footage of that day because he and I were both so giddy as this thing actually works. You know, I mean, you see a fish that eats a 10 inch bait. And it was probably, this was back when we were still just learning, well, dad was learning at the time, how to paint, airbrush, uh, everything was airbrushed, and then how to get clear coat, how to keep, um, the problem that we encountered with wood was they would waterlog. After a certain amount of time just being in the water, the, uh, you know, the coating would just, uh, it would just, water would go through it. We still never could figure out a way to perfectly prevent a bait from waterlogging. Um, hence why, why we transitioned to resin later on. It just, it eliminated all the issues. So 
keep going. All right, we're hooked. We're, you know, dad's building baits galore. We're trying all kinds of different things. Um, dad made some multi-joints for us. I'll try to put some pictures up. But dad did multi-joints, did a number of different glide baits, different sizes, body styles, everything. Okay. Um, so we keep going. Oh, different paint jobs too. We tried it all. Um, and at the time we were running, you know, traditionally, like how everybody else said, to, we were watching video after video, Butch Brown, Working Class Zero, uh, Tactical Bassin, anyone and everyone that could actually talk about big swim baits, big glide baits, big hard baits specifically, not, not soft baits, um, how to make these things work. And not just that, we, we figured out how to get them to glide. Oh, Marlon Bates was another one that we watched too. Um, and he's a very, very well, um, you know, very accomplished bait builder on YouTube if you have free time to check him out. But it was amazing to us as to why could we not catch any other fish other than this one lake trout. Okay, we get into spring and dad had made me a, it, it's very similar to a bull shad. It's a multi-joint. It's not a bull shad, but it's, it's you know, multiple joints. It's a three-joint, four-segment bait. I think it was about seven to eight inches long. And it was in like a um, a black and white kind of gizzard shad kind of look, but um, burning it on a seven to one gear ratio, and I had a spot, pound and a half spot, eat it. Okay, and the water was about 55 degrees. I remember that specifically because we thought, well, okay, so it's got to be 55 degrees for them to hit a hard bait. Um, keep on going down the rabbit trail. Okay, so now we've had success with a glide bait with a trout. We've now had success with a spotted bass with a multi-joint. Okay, so the next thing that happens back on Watauga Lake, still fishing that multi-joint, and I remember this one very specifically. There was a swim bait only tournament that day on Watauga Lake. Me and dad went over because we were wanting to basically see how we would have done compared to these guys throwing more, you know, uh, readily available or uh, well, uh, well established glide baits. Well, swim baits. Um, and I think the way that they worded it as defined by tackle warehouse must be four or five inches or longer, maybe even six inches or longer. I can't remember right now, but needless to say, we went over, we didn't have a fish in the boat until 2 p.m. And it was amazing. We had, uh, you know, they always talk about low, you know, barometric pressure and a storm rolling in and everything like that. We got a one bank and I still fish that bank. Um, that was something. Burning a multi-joint as fast as I could turn the handle without my fingers slipping off the knobs with a seven to one gear ratio and they would absolutely annihilate it. They would rip the rod out of your hand. And here's the kicker. Once again, another miserable day. Gorgeous that morning. Beautiful sun, not too much wind. Okay, well, 1.30, we get a storm front that pushes through. Wind, rain, the whole nine yards, we're getting it. And we're in a rain suit and still trying to fish. Okay, well, the, the front pushes out and the sun doesn't come out. It stays cloudy, but it's, you know, you still got that right after the big front. And then I start burning the multi-joint. I had three fish within 20 minutes that weighed over 12 pounds. So, I mean, you can tell, I mean, I'm averaging a four pound large mouth. Um, great day. It really was. And it opened our eyes once again to the power of the swim bait. And these are not like outrageously huge fish. These are four pounders. All right, now things get kind of fun when we get into the summer. We'd always heard about the rat or the big topwater baits. So <laughs> that was a lot of fun. We would take these big wooden 
topwater baits. And I had a rat, and Dad was throwing a 12-inch wake bait. The thing, no joke, it is 12 inches long. And I'll put some pictures of these baits in here. But 12 inches long. Um, I started catching them on the rat really well that year. Once again, I mean, I was bringing in, I mean, 12 pounds regularly in three fish. Um, that was just the, it was the bite that year. And I've yet to have another good year throwing the rat. However, I've been throwing glides a lot here recently, so I can't really say that the rat's been off. It's just I haven't been throwing it. Um, going back. <laughs> On the 4th of July weekend, it was the Saturday of 2020, 4th of July weekend, we were catching them, and that was the day Dad caught it on 12-inch bait. And it was only, it was a 397, I think is what it was. It didn't even break four pounds. Catches that fish on a 12-inch, solid white. No paint scheme to it. It's solid white. Um, wake bait. It's got two joints in it, so it's actually got two clacks. Phenomenal little bait. I still throw it today. Um, but fish will eat them they'll eat them they they don't have a mirror they all they know is can i think do i think that i can get that in my mouth and eat it and if they believe it they'll try it so let's keep rolling um well so we we were successful with the you know the multi-joint we've been successful with the wake bait but we've yet to catch a bass on a glide bait so it was pretty well, okay, abandon everything else. Um, you know, fall was here and um, we really, it, it slowed down a lot for us um, as far as, you know, once the, the wake bait stopped, it slowed down. Um, there, we were still belong, we belonged to a little, um, a small little club um, based out of, um, um, based out of Virginia where, uh, we're from, but um, we, st we stayed with that little club. We fished a tournament in November, um, and that was the footage from one of the previous videos of the top water on Watauga Lake. Um, that was in November. So as you can kind of see, we're still incorporating a lot of conventional tackle in with the big baits, at least in the fall. Um, winter time came, and winter time was okay fishing. I did catch one fish on a Huddleston, so it kind of kept our spirits alive, kept caught that and it's a smallmouth. Um so you know we had that success and then we're in 21 now. Alright, so now things get interesting with the glide bait. Um and they do get interesting. Um Alright, so it was in I'm trying to think I think it was actually in the fall. It took us quite a bit of time designing, redesigning, figuring stuff out, reweighing. Um, shouldn't say we. Once again, at this point, Dad is still making all of the baits. They're still made out of wood. Um, the the first resin bait that we built, and this is a we deal. I did have some uh, some play in this. Dad carved the bait out of wood. I cast the master mode and then poured it um, out of resin. Dad then weighed it, put the joint in, hardware in, weighed it and painted it and clear coated it. And then we were able to go out and it was a very, it, it was the early stages of what became the SHS Shad, South Host and Special Shad. That's how the bait got its name. The reason it got its name for that was that's where we caught our first bass, and we caught it on a, uh, a marina down near the dam. Uh, but that was the first bass that we actually, first largemouth that we caught on a glide bait. So here we are, you know, living it up because oh, we figured it out now. Finally, after two years of struggling with a glide bait, we finally figured out how to catch fish. Wow. The uh, the Otis and Ollie are really enjoying their uh, their day this e this evening. So yeah, that's the that's the two beagles in the background. But um, <laughs> getting back to it, 
So we went and we fished all fall, fished through October of 21. And um, we caught some fish. We had a great, great trips. Um, you know, some of the other footage, you also got to see that other footage on South Host and me and dad catching fish on the SHS that was out from underneath. I think it's, I think it's called Lakeview there up in, uh, right there at the 421 ramp. But, um, so we, dad had made them out of, uh, he clear coated, made the baits and it was, uh, it was going well. It was, it was really going well. Um, so then we got into uh, October, the end of October, and um, we all got sick. Uh, well, um, m my dad ended up actually passing away in December. Uh, it's 26 actually is the day after Christmas early that morning um, so he has not gotten to I guess physically see these uh, these catches here but uh, he, he knows about it and I'm confident in that but uh, and I know where dad went to he was he was saved, and and I would implore everyone of that. I know that this is about fishing and everything like that, but of everything that I could ever talk to you about and encourage you of, and that would be to uh, to meet and have Jesus as your personal Savior. And that's as simple as it gets. That's my clearest cut answer for you. Um, like I said, it's about, I know this video is about our story, but there is no story without that, so. You know, we're getting into Thanksgiving, and that's the most thankful thing you can be thankful for is to have Jesus with you. And, uh, and you know, it, it's been hard with the fishing and trying to go and things like that since, uh, you know, a lot of this, this was, this was Dad and I's deal, you know, aside from the music, but uh, how to build a better mousetrap, so to speak. So we get into 2022 and it's now just me. Um, and it, it became, I would almost say an obsession of I have to build this uh, and I have to make it work because I want to prove it'll work. Um, so I go and I keep building and I've tried a lot of dad's designs, a lot of them, a lot of different designs. Uh, a lot of the designs that you've seen here on the Instagram, Facebook page, and even on the YouTube page here, but as well as some of the other, you know, the other baits that are coming. Uh, we haven't gotten to the Jethro yet, and the Jethro has its own story, I promise. So we're into 22, Andrew's fishing. Andrew's still not really catching anything on the big bait. So, what do I do? <laughs> All right, what I do is it's 2023 now. Well, actually, let me uh, let me rewind. It's 2022, and um, I'm having live well problems. Hmm. My live wells will not fill up, and I'm not a mechanic. I'm going to be honest with y'all that I've learned a lot in the past two years, a lot, especially about boat mechanics, but um, I reach out to to uh, to a friend of mine, Mr. Nathan Light, and he is gracious enough to help me fix my live well pumps. So he helps me fix these live well pumps, and he and I have a good, <laughs> good discussion talking about fishing these times, but um, so all through this, we're talking, and I'm, I'm telling him about this bait that I'm working on, and I'm carving it uh, at the time. This was November. It's almost Thanksgiving, and then I, I think we got it finished finally. Um, it was actually, we got the live well pump finished one night, and then he helped me with the trolling motor another night, and I didn't realize my trolling motor was only running 12 volts instead of 24. So... <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, that, that makes for an even more entertaining story as to um, my dad and I having not <laughs> hooked up a trailing motor to 24 volts versus just 12. So regardless, let's keep rolling. I'm telling Nathan about this bait that I'm coming up with, and I, I'm sticking with a big bait. You know, I, I'd shown, we had the big Omer. It was done. I wasn't going to try to do that. What I wanted was a shad-style bait, something in a shad's profile. Okay. The Jethro was born in about um, March of 23. That was the first batch of Jethro's and it was you know it was its own design um, came up with it I think I actually built it based on a piece of wood that dad had cut out and I wanted to finish uh, so the Jethro was born and in about I still think it was about March because I had it in April during the smallmouth spawn on South Houston and I was the only one that had one, and I, I didn't even know if it would work all that well. Had never, you know, it was my first full-blown design that Andrew had taken and built. So I took it over to South Houston, and I had so much interaction out of Smallmouth, it was not even funny. I mean, you know, um, I called my wife, I called my mom, and I was telling them both, like, this is great. This bait is doing everything it's supposed to do. Um, it is having so much interaction out of these fish. And it was just like, but it's still not right. There's something wrong because I'm not landing anything. <laughs> and here I am, you know, this was, this was like reinvigorating this fire as to like, okay, it's time to build again. Um, the bait was doing great in the sense of it was it was pulling fish, but why was I not hooking them? This was always Dad and I's problem. We couldn't seem to get the fish to hook. Okay, so is it a color problem? <laughs> is it a hook problem? Believe me, checked all those boxes. Okay, so went through all that, and we had I had a ball learning this stuff. Okay, but I, I did not actually catch the first fish on the Jethro. It wasn't mine. Well, no, excuse me. It was mine. It just wasn't there. <laughs> it wasn't on South Host, and it was actually on Boone Lake, and it was in the Tennessee Shad Keller, the green one. Uh, I caught it on Boone Lake, and, you know, I had a blow-up on it um, early, and that was the big fish. Missed it. And then the second fish I catch is like a pound and a half largemouth. You know, it's a nice fish, but still it's small. Okay, move on in, and um, let's see here what happened next. The next one that we had was, the next one that came was the purple gizzard color, and I wanted a color that looked about like a, a shad. Um, you know, I wanted something in that silver and black, and then I kept looking, and I got to see a lot of these beautiful paint jobs from like Swimbait Universe and things like that that some of these, these painters that are far more gifted than myself can do. And, you know, these really, really pretty, like realistic gizzard shad. Okay. So I paint up a couple. And, um, you know, I give one to my friend Cody Dyson. Uh, and he's fishing with Taga Lake, and I told him to try it and let me know what he what he thought of it and any kind of you know critique or anything. How's the paint hold up? The hooks, how many yards? Okay, texts me um, in June of this year and sends me a picture of a five pound largemouth on it, and I think the other one was about a three, roughly. Um, so, okay, and I'm on cloud nine because the bait has now caught a big fish, you know. And for me, I, I, I like five pluses. <laughs> I know everybody does, but I like a five plus to be able to say it's a big fish. In our area, five, five, five plus is getting into the big fish category. Um, you know, uh, just in East Tennessee, there there's a little bit less abundant, I think, 
you know, after you get up into the double digit class, but I know they're here, so we'll get there. It'll just take, just take some time on the water. But the next one, um, I gave Nathan Light one, and Nathan was kind enough to, uh, to fish it during a, a tournament, and uh, he caught one on it as a largemouth, and it was right around the three-and-a-half-pound class. So I've got now people catching it, and yet I have not caught one. So am I really this bad at fishing my own bait? <laughs> or, um, or have I just simply not figured it out yet? Okay. So um, Nathan had caught that fish on it on, a, I think it was either a, maybe a Wednesday or a Thursday. And he was texting me, and I, I actually spoke to him on a Friday night texting him like about you know about how the bait did and things like that and we were talking about it and then I told him I was going tomorrow Saturday um, to to Watauga and I was going to throw it and here here we were having this back and forth kind of you know fun of uh, line size okay so I, I'm telling him that I throw it on 15 pound test uh, McCoy copolymer fishing line and uh, and he he's joking back with me to throw it on 20 or 25 even you know make sure it comes back and I don't blame him at all um, well the next day I get over at Watauga Lake and I put in at the Watauga Lake uh, dam right right at the ramp beside the dam uh, I didn't know if there'd be any tournaments and I figured that ramp gets a little bit less pressure so I wanted to start there so I put in, I fished one bank. I had a couple of good followers. It was a good day. Um, then I eased over to another bank and it's a bank that dad and I'd fished a lot. Um, I'd fished that bank with a lot of family, a lot of friends, and it always held fish. Okay, but this was, day was different. It was 8.30 in the morning the sun was getting ready to just start cresting over the mountains. Okay, so it's June 24th, and I get hung, <laughs> throw it into a tree, get hung. I manage to shake the bait out of the tree, and I start swimming it. Okay, the, the original Jethro, the Jethro 6-inch, is pretty much, it's a chopping-style glide bait, but, um, so that bait's doing its little cut, and then I bring it across this big log. And then about, you know, five, ten seconds later, I see this big dark shadow coming up. Uh-huh. Yep. So get there. Wham. I got him. Turns out, you know, you all have seen the, the video, and I'll link it up here, but it's the video of my six and a half currently my personal best fish but caught the six and a half that day on the Jethro and that was the that was when the glide bait just started flourishing and it, it's now become I mean it's honestly about all I want to throw I, I'm I mean I like to throw other baits occasionally but it's <laughs> it's hard to put that bait down um, I really enjoy throwing it. I mean, you know, and I told you I would I would mention as to why the bait's named the Jethro. What is the deal with the Jethro? Um, I've actually had people ask me that. Like, is the next bait going to be called Jeb? Uh, uh, you know, is your name Jethro or something like that? No, it's actually nothing to do with that. Um, so my dad's name was Lonnie Perkins. Uh, however, somehow in my childhood, I got into this uh, this playful game of calling dad Jethro. So uh, the Big Almer Trout Glide, dad built and named after my grandfather, my mom's dad, because uh, he was also a big fisherman. Uh, and uh, he would have loved to have gotten to see what these big baits would have done. And uh, in turn, I built the Jethro 
and that is where the Jethro got its name. So the Jethro became my dad's nickname for me to him. So that is, uh, that is how the Jethro got its name. So you have the Jethro now uh, that's producing some big fish. And, uh, you know, over the course of this, this summer, I've managed to catch a six and a half, a four and a quarter, um, a five, and a couple of threes, a couple of one and a halves, a couple of twos, you know. You remember the big fish, you don't remember the little ones. Um, but, you know, y'all seen some of the footage of the big bass tournaments I've fished in. Um, you know, as of right now, uh, the recording of this video on uh, November the 5th, yeah, uh, there has yet to be a smallmouth caught on the bait that I'm aware of. Um, and if anyone out there watching this video has one of the Jethro's and you have caught a smallmouth, please let me know because you were the first to catch a smallmouth on uh, on the Jethro. Um, I have yet to do it. Um, Cody Dyson and I were fishing a big bass tournament. He had one hooked. It bent the hook out on him and actually ripped the hook hanger out of the bait. Um, that fish was fighting so hard. So, uh, and is well over a five pound smallmouth. Uh, it hurt. We still won big smallmouth that day with a three something, but uh, oh, that hurt. And that, that still brings back the hurt with that fish. Um, Cause we both saw it um, and it was caught on purple gizzard or rather it was hooked on purple gizzard and it got off about halfway to the boat. And as fast as I could try to get the net, um, as everything he could do try to keep it down and it it just that fish didn't want to cooperate so we lost uh, <laughs> an over five pound smallmouth um but you know that's about where we are today you know i've caught a couple others uh the uh the pink bait the bubblegum shad it's caught a couple no no major size on it yet the green uh tennessee shad you know, it's caught some good fish, and honestly, that was the color that Dad and I kind of started working with, um, especially on South Houston. It was that green color, um, and, it, and it's worked really well, but the size, all the size has come on Purple Gizzard, uh, that standard little silver and black and purple. Uh, it's got a couple other colors in it, too, but uh, you know, we'll leave that for proprietary information. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know it's been good that is our story that is the story of Perkins Custom Swim Baits uh, it started out as a father and son team working on how to build a better mousetrap and it's taken us to where we are today you know um, and I do want to say this to everyone that I truly appreciate the uh, words of encouragement, all of the, uh, you know, anyone that's bought a bait off of me, I really do appreciate it. And all of you that watch these videos, I greatly appreciate that. And I value each one of your views and every amount of your time, because I know some of my videos tend to run a little bit lengthy, uh, cause I, I truly do enjoy and love building and doing what I do. Um, and you can tell, I guess, because I can talk about it for a while, but I do really value your time and I really do appreciate you taking time to actually learn and see what we did. Um, you know, because I look at these baits not so much as just for me. Um, a lot of this is part of my dad's legacy and I really appreciate you taking time and interest in them uh, because that is one of the things that is so special to me. Um, so, unfortunately, crankbait fish and worm fish don't hold the same appeal anymore. And as you can tell now by the story, you kind of can, I think, get a little bit of seeing as to why it is the way it is with, uh, you know, it's the uh, the swim baiters only club of uh, 
you know, it's time to hero or zero because that's, that's what you do with a swim bait oftentimes. But, you know, and that's okay. Uh, it doesn't bother me to go out and just say, I'm just going to throw a swim bait today. I may catch nothing, and I may have the day of my life, you know. Uh, but like I said, I know this is a lengthy one, but I wanted to give you our story. And for those of you that have stuck around and kind of watched this, I really appreciate your time. I really do. I appreciate you sticking around. I appreciate you being part of the little community that we're building here. Um, whether you're here located in East Tennessee or you're watching these videos to kind of gain an understanding about something somewhere else. Either way, I appreciate you taking some time to watch this with me. Um, or watch this after I videoed it regardless. But I really appreciate that. And, um, you know, we're getting into Thanksgiving. Uh, and I wanted to get this video out, you know, right around Thanksgiving. Because I really am thankful. Above all, I'm thankful that I'm saved. You know, that's that's the most important thing. And I, I really do implore you, if, if, uh, if you're not, look into that. Do look into that. Thankful for my family and everything they've done for me. Uh, thankful for all the times that me and my dad had building, designing, you know, discussing, figuring out this bait. My wife, my mom, the whole nine yards, all my family. And, uh, you know, I want to thank each and every one of you. You all have, uh, have really made it, you know, very... Uh, enjoyable for me and uh, it, it it really is appreciated for me that uh, each one of you all that subscribe to my little channel here to hear me ramble and talk about a swim bait and about fishing um, it, it just is a really good feeling to know that you all appreciate or that you all really like the information you know I want to do something very special for you all for Christmas. So um, next, you know, the December, the first Monday of December video, I'll have some more information on that. And we're gonna do something special. Um, you know, Christmas is the time of giving. You know, God gave us his son. So uh, I want to be giving it to the fishing community and I want to give you all a bait. I do. We're going to figure out how we're going to do that, so I'm going to be looking into that between now and then as to the best way to do that. But um, be thinking about it because I'm wanting to open it up to where you all get to choose the bait. You you know, I'll probably give you three, three selections or maybe two. I may give you the Jethro 7.5 and the original Jethro, the 6.0, but um, I'm looking forward to that. We'll figure out how we're gonna do that in the next video, but I'll give y'all a little bit of a teaser since y'all have made it pretty much 30 minutes plus into this video. That's what we're gonna do for December. I want to give you all a bait um, because I truly appreciate you being part of this and appreciate you all listening and also encouraging me along the way. Because it's been fun so far and I'm looking forward into 24 as to how we're gonna you know, we're gonna break PBs across the board. And I want to hear about you all breaking PBs too. If any of this information helps you all knock out a big limit or a, you know, a new PB, let me know about it. I'd love to hear about it um, because I'll celebrate right there with you, you know. Um, it is truly a wonderful time of year. You know, we're going into Thanksgiving, we're going into Christmas. So, and then we'll get ready into New Year's resolutions with some, uh, some big baits. But hey, thank y'all for sticking around. Thank you for watching our story, the Perkins Custom Swim Bait story. This is where it began. It's not where it's ending. This is just the beginning. This is how we started. And I appreciate you taking some time. I'll see you on the next video, 1st of December. Get, be ready to look out for that video because we're going to have the details as to how we're going to do the bait giveaway and uh, as far as which bait it's going to be and things like that. So I appreciate everyone's time. Thank you all for sticking around, and I'll see you all in December. Happy Thanksgiving.
and I'll talk to you in the next video.